Hey everyone, and welcome to a brand new series where I show how to make a Crossy Roads type game. Mine is going to be called Jumpy Chicken, so let's hop right into it. But before we do, I want to give an idea of what this game is going to look like. So I've made a little kind of prototype game almost. As you can see, we can go right to left, and there's a nice score counter that's polished, and we can go infinitely upwards. Then of course, here's our first road. We have some cars that'll randomly spawn, and they have different colors and there are different types of cars like there was one that went way faster than the other ones so we have quite a few different types of cars oh there was a taxi right there we can also go backwards a bit but it'll take our score down okay so here's another road and there we go we just got taken out so that is what happens when we get hit by car but don't worry our little chicken's fine as you can see if we restart he's back on the job now this isn't exactly what the game's gonna look like i'll probably add like buttons where you can maybe even a main menu screen or something like that so here i have two sprites one is called player and one is called ground so in the player sprite i have chicken one which is a cute chicken i designed that faces to the right now make sure you make it face to the right that way once we actually rotate it with code like this we'll set it to point in zero degrees that way it points up then i have a chicken two which all it is is just a little blink so that way this chicken will randomly blink to give it a little bit of life in the ground i have ground one which is just a blank grassy place i have ground two which is just a small road and ground three which is a big road okay so with that out of the way let's go ahead and start programming the basic movements okay so let's start by pulling out a win green flag clicked underneath this let's make a brand new broadcast message name this one reset player like so then i'm going to pull out a win i receive and do the reset player that we just made next i will do a switch costume to chicken one and then a go to front so to make sure that it's in front of the ground and for now that's going to be it so this one right here is just going to be the broadcast that's going to reset the player every time we want to start now let's go ahead and make another broadcast and name this one start game Game and put that underneath the reset player next I'll go ahead and pull out this start game and for the very first loop in this let's just make it blink we'll do a wait one second and change this to a wait pick random one to three seconds to give it a little bit of randomness then let's go ahead and do a switch costume to chicken 2 which is our blinking if you remember then a wait 0.2 seconds duplicate this and do chicken 1 then delete that wait at the very end so now if we click on this flag as you can see our chicken should randomly blink there when it just blinked a second ago and it did it again okay so that is all working okay so now we need to make a few new variables that will hold the information of this chicken so we'll start with making one called player x click ok and these are going to be for all sprites then player y like that and now let's make scroll x which is also for all sprites and then scroll y also for all sprites so those are the four ones for the player so now that we have all those let's go ahead and reset all of them to zero in the beginning so player x and player y to zero for now duplicate this and then do scroll x and scroll y also to zero in the reset player so now it should reset it every time we start and you can go ahead and hide all these variables now we want to make one more broadcast message and name this one update so this is going to forever broadcast in a forever loop so we can go ahead and put this in forever underneath here and do broadcast update so now we can do a when i receive update and put all the things we want to happen instantaneously in this start by doing a go to block pull out a player x and scroll x and do a minus so we're going to do player x minus scroll x and for the x duplicate this and then do player y by right clicking like this and then minus scroll y so that way it's going to the right position so now as you can see it'll go to the very middle if we start now let's go ahead and do a change and do change scroll y and then scroll x by you can go ahead and duplicate the this one up here and then do a divided by 15 so we're going to do player x minus scroll x divided by 15 for the scroll x duplicate all of this and then go ahead and put this in the y but we're going to change it to the player y minus scroll y so this divided by is how smooth the camera is going to pan in to the chicken well let's go ahead and put that on top so now we want to link the ground to the scroll x and scroll y because right now 
you can't even see it and that is because we haven't shown it yet so i want to go ahead and do a when i receive the update which is that one we did earlier and then go back into the player and pull this go to block in there so now we can go ahead and make some new variables and name these ground x and make sure these are for the sprite only then ground y and the reason we're doing it for the sprite only is because they're going to be per the clone so we're going to do ground x minus scroll x and then ground y minus scroll y and i'm going to go ahead and do a when i receive start game and a set ground x and ground y to zero that way it resets everything and let's go ahead and do a repeat two times here and then put a wait one second and change this to 0.1 now let's go ahead and change the ground y by 365 then do a create clone of myself on the very top next let's go ahead and make another for this sprite only variable and name this clone with a question mark then at the end of this loop let's set the clone to no then do a when i start as a clone and duplicate that one and do set clone to yes so that means the clones are going to all have the value yes and the sprite itself is going to have the value no so now let's do an if else and do if the clone is equal to yes then we're going to do what we programmed and then do a show otherwise we're going to hide so it's going to hide the real sprite so now as you can see if we start look at that it's already working and now when we do a when i start as a clone i want to make sure we switch costume to ground one so that way it's the grass so now that we've got this working we should be able to go into the player and do change player y and do like 15 and it should actually scroll there we go as you can see this is actually scrolling cool so now we just need to figure out a way to make it to where when we press the w key it, the chicken will jump and make it scroll to do this i want to go into the player and then do a when i receive and do start game then do a forever loop go down to the my blocks and create a brand new block and name this player jump then do add an input and do speed now click ok and put this player jump in the forever loop and now let's go ahead and program the player jump so thankfully this is pretty simple so all we need to do is an if else here and do a if the key and scroll down until you find w and then do change the player y by speed a wait until and then a not and do wait until not w press so it waits until we let go so now if we start nothing is going to happen that is because we haven't set the value of the speed let's make the jump 13 so now as you can see when we press w it actually goes up but you may also notice that it's super 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 like jittery it just looks like we're teleporting almost so let's make a for all sprite variable called smooth y next in this when i receive update let's set the smooth y to smooth y times 0.7 now it's a friction algorithm then go ahead and do a change player y by smooth y right underneath it like that and in the player jump we're going to actually do a set and do set the smooth y to speed instead of the player y and now if we go ahead and delete that change this should be smoother there we go as you can see it actually is like a smooth jump that we just slide into boom 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 let's go ahead and make the player be able to go right and left also all we need to do is duplicate this when i receive and then delete that player jump now we'll make a new block and name this player strafe then add another input and do speed just like the last one so now let's go ahead and put that player strafe in there and do 13 it's basically the same script so if we go ahead and duplicate all of these all we need to do is say d which is going to the right and then and duplicate it again except we're not going to want this in an if else so let's go ahead and really quickly delete this one instead and we're going to put everything in just a normal old if then we're going to duplicate this and set it to a that way it goes left and instead of smooth x we want smooth y so let's make another for all sprite variable and name this smooth x so instead of smooth y we want smooth x so now let's change this smooth y's to smooth x for the player strafe and then let's duplicate all the same stuff in the when i receive update we'll do the set smooth x to smooth x times 0.7 then change the player x by smooth x now if we go ahead and put that 
that in there, we should be able to go right and left now. Okay, you may notice the right one works, but if you try to go left, it also goes right. That is because if we did if A press, then change it by the same value. So we need to do speed times negative one. That way you say the strafe is 13, when we take it by negative 1, it'll set it to negative 13. So now we can go right and left, and it's actually more fun. Okay, a couple things. You may notice once we go far enough, it kind of just is a white background. So we need to make a limit to how far we can go right and left. To do this, let's make a new block and name this x limit then add an input and do limit now do make sure this is run screen without refresh now let's go ahead and put this x limit at the bottom of the when i receive update and for this value let's do 30 because we want the scroll x to spawn once we are to scroll x 30. now we want to do an if statement and if the scroll x and do a greater than block here is greater than limit which means we've gone too far then we're going to set the scroll x to limit like that now if we try to go to the right as you can see it'll stop scrolling and it'll make it to where we're actually changing the x position but if we go back it'll scroll again now we need to do it for the left side as well to so duplicate all the scripts and change this to a less than so if scroll x is less than limit except we want to do times negative one so it's the opposite so if scroll x is less than limit times negative one then set scroll x to limit times negative one so duplicate that duplicate that and now we shouldn't be able to go too far right or too far left there we go this is actually capped in between now okay so now that we have the movement up and going you may notice that once we go far enough it ends going upwards as well so to change this i want to make the background infinitely loop but every time it loops i want it to change to a different costume so you can't tell it's looping so let's go ahead and head into the ground sprite and make a new block and name this repeat and then do a run screen without refresh now let's go ahead and do a forever loop and do forever repeat for the when i start as a clone like that then for the repeat all we need to do is do an if statement and do if the y position is less than negative 347 and you may have to tweak these values then i want to do a change the ground y by 730 so the reason we're doing 730 is that way it skips another one so it it'll look like it's looping then we're going to do a switch costume to pick random one to three alrighty so now it should be infinitely scrolling and that wasn't actually that hard so we can go right to left and then if we jump every time there we go here's a road and let's just keep going here's another road this one looks small and then let's just keep going boom 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 okay here's another road and then here's some grass and as you can see this is just an infinite scrolling background every time it gets to the bottom Bottom, it'll just loop back to the very top and switch to a different costume so it has the illusion of being infinite I want you to be able to go down as well by clicking the S button but right now we can't so how we are going to do this is in this player jump here in the else let's go ahead and put a new if statement and duplicate all of this stuff and put it inside of there and then also the key then we'll do a if key S pressed that way it's actually going the right way and then let's go ahead and do speed times negative one that way instead of changing it by 13 it'll be negative 13 then i wanted to hop a little bit less going backwards just because it's hard to go backwards so we'll take that divided by two so now so now if we go ahead and press s as you can see it goes back a bit but i don't want you to actually be able to scroll down i want it to be like when you go to the right as you can see it's not scrolling anymore it gets locked there oh also i just know notice a bug when you press the a key it actually infinitely does it and the reason for that is because we did wait until not depress so let's go ahead and fix that and now that is fixed anyway back to what we were doing so to make it not scroll down we need a another variable and we're going to name this scroll y lock like this so that is going to keep track of where we want the scroll y to be locked at then when we press the s key i want to set the scroll y lock to scroll y then in this x limit here we're actually going to do a little bit outside of the name because we're going to make it lock the y also so it's technically not just x but keep that a secret nobody will know so let's change this to scroll y is less than scroll y lock then we're going to set the scroll y 
to scroll Y lock. So now if we go ahead and put this in the very bottom, when we press S, you should see that now it doesn't actually scroll. So now we can never go off the map. We can go all the way to the right and we can also go all the way to the left. I said that backwards. I'm going to the right right now. And we can go down, but it won't get out. And then if we go up, as you can see, it just goes infinitely. Okay, now one last thing. When you restart the game after going a while, the camera is going to be a little bit weird. So to fix this, we want to set in the very beginning on the reset player, you want to set the scroll Y lock to zero. That way in the beginning, as you can see, boom, it resets it. Then another thing, I want the player to be a little bit down. So let's set the player Y to like negative 25 or something like that. Yeah, that looks nicer. And one last thing, let's go ahead and make it actually look like he's jumping a bit. We'll do a change size by at the right here in the update and then a minus and then a divided by. Then let's go ahead and do a size and do change size by 100 minus size divided by three and put that in the change size by. So now you may be wondering like, what did that do? Well, that is actually a algorithm from my previous video on the algorithms you need to know. And it just makes it to where you're always smooth into whatever size you set. So I want this to smooth into size 100. So if we do a change size by like 50 here, as you can see, it's going to reset it back to to 100. So that means we can put a chain size by 15 in the jump. So we're going to go ahead and do that and do that in the W and the S. So when S pressed or W, we'll change size by 15. So now as you can see, it gives it the illusion that because it's getting slightly bigger, it makes it look like it's actually jumping. And similarly, you can do that to turning as well. So we can do a turn 15 degrees and do a 100 minus size divided by three and change this to direction. Then as you can see, it's going to go to the side. So if we just do zero, as you can see, it's going to face up. But if we do like turn 15 degrees, it's going to actually make it tilt slightly. So that means if we do in the D point in direction for the D 30 degrees, and then for the left, we can do negative 30 degrees. So now with those two little algorithms, as you can see, when we go to the right, our chicken tilts a bit. And then when we go forward, our chicken jumps. So those are some things that you can do to really help hold polish this game off. So I hope you enjoyed this very first episode in how to make a crossy road type game. And if you did, then make sure to hit the like button and consider subscribing to let me know that you're excited for the series. But yeah, thank you all so much for watching. Anyway, this has been Owen and I am out.